Have you ever wanted to make something witchy, but you didn't know where to start? Well, here is probably not the place to start, because today we are going to be looking at a very specific type of witch, a historical witch. I made this witchy 1830s costume back in February to March or May this year and you're probably wondering, Kat, why did it take us so long for us to see it? Well, can you imagine making a Halloween witchy October costume in spring? <laughs> I first saw the design for this costume on Instagram in October as part of a historical witches series by chloe.z.arts. I'll leave a link to her profile down below, please check it out, she's got amazing designs. But this was back in October 2020. By the time I actually got around to making this costume, it was already spring in 2021. And it just felt out of place and I lost a bit of motivation after it was done to actually photograph it and edit a video about it. So I finished the costume and kind of just forgot about it. So here we are. But with Halloween approaching and the witchy month of October, I thought it was the right time to dig it back out. If you're interested in more historical witches, I recommend looking at Chloe's profile. And also I know there, is, there are a few costuming friends making other witchy costumes this month. So please check out the hashtag whimsical witches, both here and on Instagram for more witchy costumes. I had never delved into the 1830s before and that was part of the allure of this costume. I really like trying out new decades. New decades, centuries, styles, you know. It looked so dramatic, but beautiful and a little quirky. I just loved it. My first step was to plan out the costume and assemble the materials. Miraculously, I already had the perfect fabric in my stash. This never happens. This cotton, which I think may be a polished cotton or a cotton sateen of sorts, I bought in my favourite fabric shop in Spain maybe four or five years, four years ago maybe I want to say. I was there on holiday, I'd been to that shop before and they usually have a big summer sale and I was there at the right time, the right place and I think I got this for 5 euros per meter. I bought 7 meters which I knew was plenty for most historical costumes and it was enough for this and I think I even had some left over. So obviously this costume has a high yardage necessity because it has a capelet, a hat and the biggest sleeves on earth. <laughs> In addition, I got some cotton twill out of my stash uh, to interline the bodice and the sleeves and some tarlatan for the skirt. I also used the same blue cotton but over dyed it to a darker blue for these contrasting details in the hem and the cuffs and other bits. The next step was to start patterning. I used a truly Victorian 442 pattern which is for ball gowns bodices. This is technically dated to the 1860s. But bodice construction really didn't change that much and I was already going to change it so that it matched the design with the three darts at the front, so I thought it'd be fine. I made a mock-up, fit it, and then I played around with the dart placement to mimic the design. Once that was done, I transferred that pattern to paper and then cut it out of my cotton twill and my blue cotton.
transfer the darts, I made small perforations on the pattern pieces and then used a small white chalk pencil to make dots and then connected them. Then I flatlined the bodice pieces by basting along the edges, then moving on to the darts and the side and shoulder seams. So I just wanted to, I don't know, this isn't going to really be a vlog style, but I just thought I'd tell you what I'm doing next. Because I th feel like I like talking directly at you rather than in a voice over. So here are my pieces. I think the previous clip, clip would have been me basting around the darts, which is really important when you're using uh, like two separate pieces of fabric. If you're going to sew darts, just baste around the inner and outer part of the dart before you actually baste and sew them. So that's what I'm going to do now. So my next step is just I'm going to baste and sew the darts. Then I'm going to do up all the seams. Because why not? Yeah. Uh, footage of that ensues. Added a placket to the back for the closure. I used the exact same method I use for skirts, and I have a tutorial on how to do that, which I'll link down below. However, I will just say, as you will see in the outro for this, with some more close-ups of the costume, back closures are a pain to put on by yourself. If not practically impossible. So I think I will avoid back closures as much as possible from now on, but I think historically they are the most common. Usually you would have someone in your household that could help you get dressed, either, you know, a sister, a daughter, a husband, a, anything, a maid, most wealthy people would have a maid, so yeah, I would not, I would recommend uh, thinking about a front closure if you, if you want to get dressed quickly by yourself. <laughs>
And that was the main construction of the bodice. It was pretty straightforward. And with that, it was time to start th thinking about the sleeves. Oh, the sleeves. <laughs> Hello you guys, I just wanted to come by real quick to tell you what was going on with the rest of this dress. So the bodice is actually over there. I've done some alterations to it yesterday and I think it's as good as it's going to get. So instead I decided to move on to start sewing the sleeves. Now, Chico sleeves are... Jesus, yeah, gigantic. Gigantic? Chico? You know what I'm about. Anyway, uh, this is from Patterns of Fashion 1 and this is the a dinner dress circa 1830s, 1836. This is the pattern. So I just scanned this on my printer and then I blew it up. So the scale is one eighth, one to one eighth. I don't know how to say that properly. But it means that um, one eighth on here equals one inch. And so I scanned this up and then I cut down to what I needed, which was only the sleeve. And then I I blew up the image by 800%. <laughs> this is a really basic way to do it. I'm not even sure if it's right, but there's a couple of different videos on how to use patterns of fashion on YouTube already. So I'll just link them in the description box in case you're interested. But yeah, I just blew up the image by 800 and then I used paint to print it out so that it prints out like each page as a bit. And I've just taped it together into this. Oh my God. I just got it. That's my hand. That's my hand for comparison. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. So I guess the next step is to make a mock-up, maybe, if I have enough fabric to spare. And then just cut them out. I'm not going to alter them at all. I don't think I'll need to, uh, unless this doesn't fit my arm. That will definitely fit my arm. So, yeah. More updates soon. So it's been a little while, I've been a bit busy, but here is the sleeve mock-up. I think that's where I left off. I showed you the patterns of fashion too, where I was taking the sleeve from. Here is the mock-up. As you can see, it's pretty dang good. It's a massive sleeve. I do really like it and I've tried it on. The only modification to the pattern that I had to do was to add some width here, uh, which equates to that bit there. Uh, that. <laughs> Uh, and I'm about to cut out the sleeve, so I just wanted to show you the sheer size of it. Um, so obviously it won't fit in the fabric when it's folded in half, so I have to cut each sleeve individually. And it does waste a bit of fabric right here, but I'm hoping I can use that for bindings and stuff later on. So yeah, that's what I'm going to do now. the sleeves are interlined, the side seams are done up, and the tops gathered down. Way down. The fabric was so thick, I was amazed my sewing machine could get through it at all. But I keep being impressed by this little vintage singer.
I also added some cuffs to the sleeves. I trimmed some lace and gathered it down to add to the neckline. I turned the raw edges under and sewed the lace over top. For the skirt, my first step was to estimate the appropriate hem size for the time period. I looked at a few examples across my books and decided on 3.5 meters. Though a larger skirt hem may seem always desirable, you know I like that swoosh. The larger the hem, the more support the skirt will need, as it is heavier. This is how and why the crinoline came about. Although I had enough fabric to make the skirt hem longer, the skirt hem wider, I decided not to use it, I decided to limit myself and that is something that I've learned because in the beginning I would always just try to cram, when I first started sewing historical costumes, I would always try to cram as much fabric into it as I could for that extra extra, but sometimes periods don't need that much fabric, you know, and this silhouette was the case. I cut out my fabric and interlined it with tarlatan by doing large basting stitches along the long and short edge. Then I pleated up the sides with the fork method and gathered the back. I based the construction of this on examples across my books which include Patterns of Fashion 1 and Cut and Construction by Nora Wall. The pleats and gathers are secured with a machine stitch too. Then I did up the back seam and added the skirt placket. When I was looking for bodice attachment methods, I found this adorable illustration in one of my books that looked nearly identical to the costume. I thought it was really cute. But I also found a construction method. I decided to try this one from an example at the Gloucestershire Museum included in Patterns of Fashion 1. I sewed on some linen tape to the skirt top, right sides together. Now, I'm going to be honest, I don't actually remember how I attached the bodice and I have no footage of it. It was so long ago! I think what I did was I turned the raw edge of the bodice inside and then I stitched that down 
to the lace tape, to the linen tape, so that it covered it. I can see some stitches. I think that's what, um, that's how I did it. A mystery. Apologies about that. Now that we have a dress, I moved on to working on the capelet. The one with the design is tiered, so I decided to make two and then join them at the neck. I, I did not even pattern this, I just drew it straight on on the fabric. I've made up one capelet before and it was a very simple procedure, very similar to making a circle skirt. On my dress form, with the dress on it, especially because of the big sleeves, I just measured down the front, the side and the back to understand how long I wanted it to be. Then I drew that straight on the fabric and cut it out. I do recommend watching that capelet video if you want a little bit more detailed instructions. I'll link it down below as well so you can grab that. I also interlined it with tarlatan. This would be extra useful later on to support the weight of the trims. The difference in the way the fabric lays is pretty noticeable. Now that I had all my main components, it was time to tackle the trims. I had one brief delusional moment when I thought about embroidering these vines, but then I decided that I was insane and moved on. I bought this cheap poly trim on eBay and tried dyeing it. I also got some upholstery fringe and used dye to change the turn of the blue. I thought both dye jobs were quite successful. I made some bias tape of the darker blue to use as trimming and, well, it was time to stop properly on the hand sewing. I tested out the placement on the dress form, pinned them into place. With some matching thin silk thread, which I waxed, I did small whip stitches on both sides of the bias tape. I then pinned on the vine trim and sewed it down by hand. The vines were secured with whip stitches and each leaf had three stitches across the middle to secure it down. It took Forever. At this point I came to terms with the fact that I hated the fringe trim. 
I got a replacement and it worked so much better. I turned the raw edges of the cape under so they would be automatically caught when I sewed down the fringe. Two tasks and one stitch. I bound the neck of the capes in a thick bias band which was long enough to be tied into a bow. I added some of the leaf trim to the bodice and made this hat. I don't have any footage of making this hat because it was a rush job and sort of midnight madness, uh, but I really wanted to thank my friend Maddie from Maddie Does Cosplay on Instagram. She made a similar hat and she passed on her notes and they were entirely useful and I think the only reason this hat is even here. As you can see, I got the proportions of it a little wrong. Um, but I think it's still really cute. I used a contrasting satin, blue satin that I bought for the lining layer and the bow details and I used the cotton for this and it's just made of heavyweight interfacing with some, I think I added some tolitan and some wire to it just to make it really stiffer and then I didn't line this top bit here which made it flop down and then just steamed it into place. I really enjoy doing millinery but I'm not an expert in any way and so I don't really feel prepared to share that. Uh, but maybe one day. If you want, I do have a video on how to make a hat. The construction method is pretty much the same, just a different pattern. So I'll link that below as well. And that is it. I don't have any worn footage of this costume outside because, well, where the heck would I wear this? But I do have some beautiful shots of this costume that my friend Eugene, an amazing photographer, took. And I'll add them at the end of this video. I'll also post more on Instagram, so please check them out if you can. Just before we wrap up, I really wanted to thank my top tier patrons, Erin, Laura, Lourdes, Alexa, Rhonda, and Melly. Thank you so much for your continued support. It's your support on Patreon that allows me to make costumes like this and videos like this. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm really happy with the turnout of the costume. I really like doing sort of historical crossovers with different things, like when I did my Jane Porter Disney historical thing. Uh, I hope to do more of these in the future because they really do bring me joy and I think the costumes are very cute and I hope if you know of anyone doing an 1830s event in the UK or you know anything really I could wear this too, please let me know. And I'll see you all next week.